just kick this one off pretty quick. How y'all doing? We have some work. We have some work right now that uh, didn't quite sign up for, <laughs> but that's how it goes. So we have a Avenger and most of them are not exactly brand new. Um, and this one in particular, ooh, let's take a look-see. So if you look in the, like this area right here, you'll notice that doesn't look normal. So it had tint on it um, and it's still, it still has some glue. It still has some shit left in the seals. And if you guys have ever fucked with an Avenger, you know that Avengers have tight seals. They're not super fun cards to do. Not all of them are that bad. Some of them are a little looser. Some of them are a little tighter. This one seems kind of in between, but it's got old crummy felt seals. So a lot of people ask me about shit like this. And I'm not a huge fan of doing stuff like this um, for, you know, the tighter felt seals, but we're not taking door panels apart. We're going to be doing things um, like you normally see me do them. We're just probably going to be using a little bit more soap, which uh, I'm going to have to go fill up, actually. Let me go do that. Two seconds. I'll be right back. Um, I got I to gotta add a little bit more soap to my spray tank. That's the one thing I forgot. I knew there was something. Okay, we'll be we'll be right back. Um, Y'all hang out and chat and uh, and talk to each other real nice. Okay, we'll just leave this this running. The uh, what was the last thing that I need to do? Oh, I wanted to say thank you, thank you to Steven, um, who had a two dollar super chat um, before we even went live to motivate me. <laughs> Definitely needed for this one. Holy shit! Thank you so much though. Um, all right, so we're just gonna leave this like this. Just uh, let me go fill this up.
Okay. Finally caught a live stream. It's been a minute. Welcome, man. Just got my re rewind to raw. Nice. I think you're gonna like it. So let's put some soap. We're gonna go a little heavy on the soap today because it's warm too. It's a bit warm too and uh, you know, we can use, we can use all the help that we need. So let's go ahead and we gotta fill this up. Fill this tank up with some air. Uh, any reason you're not gonna be using Avery NR? Um, the biggest reason, it's not, there's nothing wrong with Avery NR. I still like the film. I wanna go with uh, Geo because I would rather have an all-encompassing brand. Oh shit, did that just pop? I thought I heard a fuse. That's no good. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> All right, well, we got some air out of it. We'll have to figure out what that is in a little bit. I don't know if you guys heard that. So I have a little mini air compressor, use it off of a 12 volt. And one of the fuses in this box, like, this is, this is what you get into with cars like this. So it's already pretty um, torn apart. And that's why this is open. I got a battery charger on it just to keep it maintained. Um, one of these popped, I heard it, which is very unusual <laughs> for like an air compressor to do that. So I'll have to sort out what that is. But we're going to work on the doors. We can do this later because it just has to do with the outlet, nothing else. Everything starts up, so that's good. Windows still work. Good deal. Chargers charging. All right, so let's jump over to the B camera and let's get to cleaning because this is this is going to take some time. Tight seals must be a Volkswagen or Audi. We got them here too. It's not as common, but. Uh, <laughs> Nope, Dodge Avenger here. It's, I don't know why. They have like inch wide felt seals. It's bizarre. Did my first tint job the other day. It went way better than could have expected. Thank you for the videos. Couldn't have done it without you, man. Oh, that's awesome. Dude, congrats. Your first one going great. That's, that's good to hear. Most of them do not. So sweet. All right, so we're gonna start on this driver's door. Let me get my stool. Do this. Got an Avery belt coming. Very cool. You're gonna like it compared to a lot of the other ones. Yeah, something like that. Let's put that sucker right there. I put a fresh blade for this too. The Avery pouches are really, really nice. They're one of the few The boxes, we have GeoShield on, on the wall. Um, but so the Avery pouches, you're gonna like those. 
there's not very many good tint tool belts. Um, and for 40 bucks, it kind of checks all the boxes. It has exactly what you need. You can even keep two squeegees on it. So it's pretty dope. I was gonna tape these seals too, but we got so much shit that we have to like get out of here. Let me, let me see if I can get some plastic on here. Have I tried Max Pro? Um, yeah, I've tried them a little bit. The film's like works, looks, shrinks fine. Um, longevity is what I always worry about with Max Pro. They don't have a very good rep. Longevity. Longevity is my biggest concern with Max Pro. Their competitive pricing for sure, but ask ask that in some of the groups and you'll find out. So I can't I like I haven't used it long term or anything. But that's definitely one of them. All right. Fuck me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's not that bad. It like this could be far worse if it had all the purple film and stuff like that, but what concerns me right now is let's get the first one let's get the first one on here and then We'll get, we'll go from here. So the best way to get these cleaned out is obviously using a knife and then you bend it. This is really the best type of view that you guys are gonna have for this. My GoPro is not gonna be that much help, plus it's charging, so. We might switch to the GoPro. We probably will for part of this, but for right now, this, this is honestly better. All right. So good news is the uh, all the windows work. They got the majority of the film off, but that sometimes can create more headaches than that. But yeah, so he pulled up in the driveway and he's like, oh man, I, I didn't realize uh, I only need the four doors tinted. I already got the backlash done. And I'm just like, oh no. <laughs> Oh no, it's fine. It, like, so we, oh, I should say that. We, we are only doing the four doors on this one. I'll show you guys the back glass. You don't want to do the back glass on this. See, this is what's so hard about just using a one inch razor blade and why like most customers when they strip their own tent, they always miss the corners and stuff because they don't have a knife to remove it. They'll, if they use anything, it's always a one inch blade. Oh, the clear liner? Um, this clear stuff that I put on the door panel, that's just a carpet protector right now. I think what we're gonna do is just one window at a time, rather than go through and clean everything. Let's try and just kind of, I mean, it would be good to double cut, don't get me wrong. But the cutting portion is not gonna be the long part of this, so. I kind of want to see what I'm getting into first. Do I charge more for the cleanup? Uh, yeah, I would. This one, I don't know. This one <laughs> just caught me by surprise though when it pulled up. And this car is in, is in rough shape and we just kind of like, eh, don't worry, I'll take care of it for you. Because 
it's here. We can get it done. And it's good content. <laughs> These, uh, these back windows are actually very easy to do, which is the sad part because I would have loved to do the back window on this. Not the removal part, but... I make back windows look easy. Back windows can be easy. Just do them for like 10 years and you can make them look easy too. This wasn't an unexpected customer. This was an unexpected uh, job. <laughs> so the job was like very like a Dodge Avenger on the schedule. And he even called yesterday to reschedule. So I knew it was going to show up. But. I didn't know it would show up in this state. <laughs> you know, I'm really worried about this battery too. If I'm being 100% honest. But anybody who's been in this field has run into these situations where, you know, Jobs sometimes never turn out the way that you think that they're going to. All right, so we're gonna check it. Those were in rough shape new. <laughs> oh, what was that? Was that a glass aid thing? Is that what that was? Hang on. Oh, I gotta mute something. Damn, for as much as I just tried to clean out this seal, I missed, I missed a lot of shit. Oh wait, no, not, ew. There we go. You gotta try and drag it out. <laughs> Lovely. This is one of the worst ones though, so if we get through this one, the rest of it will be a little easier. Thanks for the videos. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, the tool pouch? Um, yeah, later. <laughs> Hang out till like near the end of the stream and I'll show you. I just don't feel like taking it off right now. Not until we're in a, not until we're in a good place. Oh, that shouldn't be that bad. Okay. Now that we got a lot of the shit out of the way, that shouldn't be that bad. So if this was dry, like if I didn't have to do any removal on this one, I was going to show you guys the, the sheathing tape. Um, but it's honestly a lot like packing tape is the way that it looks, the way that it feels. So you get a tape like that, you stick it to the seals, you should have an easier time, but these seals being so tight, anything that you put here to cover up that felt is going to give you some headaches because it adds thickness. Do I ever use Simple Pink? No, but I have heard really good things about Simple Pink and Simple Green. Oh, and while y'all are here, I didn't realize these were already delivered. Um, they were in a pa another package, um, but yeah, I got my uh, 
<laughs> I got two packs of carbon blades, so thank y'all for that one before. All right, let's just stick with this one door. Oh, I need five. Fuck me. I gotta go get five. Right. Be back. Hang on. I can still... No, I can't hear you guys. Shit. I gotta go get five. You guys can still hear me. You know, it's a cloudy day, but it's so much nicer than it's been. I don't like to miss so many little things but it happens when you just start getting in a groove. Yes, this, good deal. I'd bring my headphones out there so I could hear you, but the Bluetooth is gonna disconnect and then all hell's gonna break loose. Hi. Let me know anytime you need to start a GoFundMe. <laughs> Just for carbon blades. All right. So, there's a lot of shit. So anytime you scrape off the bottom, glue can set, like start sticking to this part of the window. So when you like, you roll it down, it sticks, you roll it back up, you install the top or the bottom and then you seal in all that glue. That's always not much fun. So try and rinse it down, try and pick out the little pieces. The little bits are Always so painful to remove. What am I sipping on? An iced coffee today. We take the regular coffee and then we freeze it. Or just put it in the fridge for a long time. Add some ice, add some creamer, it's a good time. I'm watching from the Caribbean. That sounds nice. I want to be there. Can we trade? You want to come to Michigan for a little bit? You can do this one and I will sip some drinks on the beach. Okay, so when we cut these and shift them, you really don't even have to shift them because of how tight they are. The Overcompensating perfectionist in me, though, sometimes likes to do that much. So, some good old, we're using some good old Avery Denison 5. Hey! That's a hell of a super chat. Holy shit. Hang on one second. God damn, well that just made everything worth it, huh? Main camera. Kirol, with the $20 super chat, holy shit. I, I wasn't sure if I heard that right, damn, thank you. Matt, I attended my first, or I attended my 15 GTI using GeoShield learning from you. I previously would only install uh, pre-cut side glass on my cars because I never 
uh, shrink the back glass correctly this time it mostly <laughs> this time it worked out mostly thank you the the 15 GTIs on the back windows those corners um, the top and the bottom they can be the hardest parts to get and then also with all the paneling that you got in the way very tight tolerances on those so 15 GTI is no joke good job man thank you so much for that super chat I really appreciate that that's that's a hell of a donation do you vinyl wrap taillights? Uh, no. No, it's something I should get into a little bit more. I've messed around with Lux and I could learn it. Um, I did it on my Explorer uh, and then I took it off. Not because I didn't like it, but because it was too dark. All right, so let's pull this back. Yeah, see, if I only had the one camera to fuck around with, life would be so much harder. There's like, see, you gotta have a GoPro for setting this up. Now, on a vehicle like this, I don't think we're too worried about scratching windows. We're not scratching windows, but... You know what I mean? Okay, so we're gonna overcompensate this corner a little bit. We're gonna clean this off a couple more times on the inside to be extra sure. Where's that heat gun? Did a 2020 Silverado and the seals were so tight it broke my shank. Ooh. What? On a 2020 Silverado? Damn. I've done a bunch of those. I haven't had that problem though. Must have been going hard on it. That sucks though. That's why you order like three of them at a time though. Those are like, I used to misplace shanks all the time. That's like losing a pen is like what can happen with a shank. It'd fall on the floor, it'd get lost in between a seat. It was always one of those tools that would just go missing on me. All right, my dudes. Let's, uh, we're gonna, we would be able to install it from this point, but I'm gonna go back over the bottom again. Strictly because when that dirt or the glue, when that dirt sits and that glue sits, it'll stick or can stick. God, I don't know how many times I've like cleaned it so thoroughly, I thought, and then I, I tint this bottom part and I'll have like one piece of glue sitting right in the middle. So let's cross our fingers we didn't jinx, our, jinx ourselves on this one. Had three, had two extra shanks or three? Hell yeah, good, good to hear it. All right, we're just gonna go over this again. It is a, it's a pretty, this car needs a little bit of work. But we're still gonna make the windows look bomb, so. We can always make the glass look good. Have I found any other solutions other than the dot matrix or the dot tricks? Um, not really. And, and I like, like the dot tricks to a point. It still has its faults. But I don't install Dotrix hardly anymore because we don't really have that, uh, 
problem as much on newer cars. You don't have like, you know, back in 2010 and a few years before that, um, you know, like the older model Fusions, right? That was one of the most popular cars on the road. So we had countless customers asking about that area. And there were other cars that did the same thing. But now it's just, it's few and far between, so it's not something that I've had to, I've had to use anytime soon. I'm just cleaning, chill, chill bro. Um, you'll see in just a second. But the, uh, yeah, I don't know. Dotrix hasn't been anything, like it's good, it works. Um, but it's got its its downsides too. Ooh, I just saw one little piece of tint that I missed here. We're gonna get rid of that. I know this is limo. You guys can't really see it. There we go. So what's most important for you guys to see about this one is what's going on here. So we have some extra soap. We scrub the window thoroughly. We need it to slide around as much as we can. And we're gonna fold up right by this liner. And we're basically gonna try and wiggle it far into this seal. And then once we do, we cross our fingers that that wasn't enough. Not quite. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You guys know that feeling when it just starts to grab a little bit too soon. It's close. But the idea, again, with all the tight seals is you have to keep them flat against the glass and you just have to gradually sneak them in. Okay, so we're just inside. We got a, sorry, I didn't mean to like call anybody out. I don't know who's saying what. <laughs> I just, well, we, we'll use a GoPro later for this, but you guys, some of you are gonna appreciate what's going on here um, with this angle in particular. The inside is not the important part, the outside on this one is. That, that is what we want. So what we did is we put it flat against the glass. We tried to tuck it over as far as we could and you can kind of like wiggle and finesse it and sometimes it'll, it'll be fine and then sometimes it'll stick. So we had a little bit of a roll here but I didn't wanna keep pushing it because the more you push it, the more that's gonna suck up shit. So uh, you get to the point where you think it's far enough over and then I rolled it up, but it's still like a, a cross your fingers type of moment because if it binds up right here, you're gonna crease the whole section. You need it to release with the pressure that you're putting up on it. So that's good. Roll it up, less scary on the bottom but still, we're gonna have some folds that we have to heat out. I wanna go over this a little bit, make sure that I don't have some pieces of glue. Looks like we're okay. I always just spray a little bit more on these things. I'd rather have too much soapy water the first time then not enough and then have to redo it two or three times on this one. So we're giving it a good bath. Ooh. All right, one corner in, one corner in, roll up. So, 
we're using a shank. And one thing that we can do is we can take it to the part that's pinching and almost pull, basically like pull the film into the seal sometimes. We want it just to coast in, right? But that's that doesn't always happen that way. When it does, it's, it's good news, but. Am I hiring? No, not right now. I'm really just taking enough work for me right now. And then I've got other things that I have to do. I'm not the best delegator. I tend to take on everything myself. Um, so, <laughs> I don't know. That's not always good. I mean, that's usually not good. Yes, that's what we want. You guys see, like, I'm constantly fighting with these air pockets? It's because the whole thing, like, balloons. But you can get it to a place. Pry back the seals constantly, like get that air to get out. You want to try and do it as smooth as you possibly can. I'll be the first to admit that one is a little rough. But there's nothing about these things that are extremely easy, so. The other side, we'll, we'll turn on the GoPro and go for it. Because I don't have enough HDMI on this one. Well, there we go, there's one, I think. Let's double check it. Jesus. Not fun, but much better than it was. And let's be real here too. We can get this as clean as we possibly can, but this is a great example of one of those cars that might have a little bit more than than your average new car, right? But more often than not, it's not gonna create any type of a long-term problem for you because like if they see a good tint job, a halfway decent tint job on something like this, mo most people are, are perfectly fine with it. Now don't go like, oh, you know, I had a little bit and then, then, then it's like, no, just like let them wipe it off, make it look good and then leave it up to them. I got a couple little air bubbles up here. I got a couple little things I got to press out, like as far as pinch points on the seal. Other than that, she's actually pretty clean, which is great. We don't have any big pieces of glue. Hell yeah. All right, so that was long enough for one door. Let's move on to door number two. Which has this funny cut. <laughs> so you guys can see the removal portion basically takes longer than the actual install itself. Sorry, one second. Something like that. So any comments, questions, concerns, criticisms? Yeah, <laughs> it's just got shit stuck to the outside. So you see what we're dealing with? The windows are gonna be the best looking part of this car for sure. Inside's all torn up, panels are halfway destroyed. But goddamn, that driver's door looks good, huh? Oh, 
but we'll even cover it up because that's how we do it. If we remember. All right, let's start the intense cleaning process again. Let's use one of our new blades, huh? We'll keep that one for cutting. Watching the master at work. Eh. I just do it a lot. What uh, what handled squeegee is the best? Um, I really like the fusion handled squeegees. Squeegee blades are always, like a lot of that's personal preference. Most people gravitate towards something like an Orange Crush or a Blue Max. Um, if you have, well, my, my disclaimer on this now is if you have a good scratch coat on your film, um, a flat out is really, really good. But if you're seeing scratches, go to a little softer squeegee. So like an Orange Crush would be a good, good option for you. Oh, these razor blades. <laughs> oh, dear Lord. So the switch goes up, but the switch does not go down. Love the criticism on a customer's vehicle. Should be blessed to have work. Yeah, I get that point. But, you know, we all have situations that we aren't super stoked about. I'm not riding this car near as hard as what I could have. Bringing a car in like this to get this type of work done is definitely a challenge. It's too, it's too windy to tin outside for me. Um, I would, I would look for different options. If you're, if tinting, if your tinting is reliant on good weather, you, that's not, that's not long-term sustainable. Like, cause you, you're basically out for an entire month. So it's hundred percent worth it to invest in some type of small space just to get it enclosed. Shit, I've seen people even like, if they have the yard space, they'll fucking put a tent out and like seal up the sides of it, put some weights on it. It's not ideal by any means, but it it's better than fighting the wind. Birds are chirping outside, but it's disastrous with this car in here. <laughs> This is, this is true, this is true Detroit right here. I mean, I, we all can relate to something like this. It's, I, I don't know a single tenor who hasn't gotten a job like this before. But like I said, we're gonna make the windows look like the best fucking part of this car. They're gonna be so clean and they're gonna be so good. Same price, yeah. Yeah, like I'm spending way more time 
doing the removal. The, the passenger side isn't as bad, but these seals also on the back are not as tight as the front doors. The front doors are always way worse than the back doors on these. Um, even with this funny cut, but I, I figured some people are gonna have questions about how to cut this, even though there isn't much different that you have to do. It's gonna look the same. Um, we just gotta go up. That's all. I wanna, I wanna roll this window down from the switch on the door, but it's stuck. No clay bar today? No, we still can. With the amount of just sheer spray, scrubbing, wiping, like it's not, it's, it's not gonna make much of a difference in this case. You still can though, for sure. Okay, 5%. out. I'm trying to not dance in front of the camera too much, but it's going to happen. GoPros are much easier here. Okay, so we're going to cut this leading edge first. That way we can shift the film. Hang on, I'm doing mental math. Yeah. No. God damn. It really doesn't matter. But like I'm all sorts of confused right now. And then shift it and then back this way and then cut that way. Okay, yes, sorry. And then the top, and then the whole thing slid up. All right, so let's cut that. I'm gonna squeak it over. Much room. That cuts a little funky. It's trying to not get in the way of the camera is actually a lot more challenging. All your cuts are like different. Cause I'm like, normally I'd just be here and I'd say, fuck you guys, right? <laughs> but we're trying to be nice. What I mean by that is uh, I wouldn't be filming. That's all. All right, so cut it. We can slide it over a little bit. We really don't need to that much. When seals are this tight, if you make them exact, like the only place you would ever see any type of gap is on the outside. Um, so like shift them a smidge, um, but it's not like 100% necessary. So that's what I was doing mental math for. So when you cut the leading edge first, if you shift it over this way, cut this edge, and then cut the bottom edge, right? Look at that. So we had our flat edge lined up at the bottom, then we cut this curve up here, had this. So when we shift it back, it's falling into that seal a little bit. So it's already tucked us just a hair, and then you can pull it down a little bit more because it's not gonna be a huge problem, but if you cut this side first, shift it over, then cut this side and cut the bottom, it's not gonna, it's like the bottom's basically gonna shift out of the seal a little bit. Kind of like with the F-150s. It's not a big deal, but just something of note. All right, let's roll this down.
around some corners. Go ham. But these these types of windows, you'll see similarities. Um, SUV back doors, um, some truck back doors where they have a little swoop, um, F-150s. It really doesn't change the way much is done. What you want to focus is on is like where is the window going? And it's like, okay, so I need flat edges there as a reference. And then whatever the bottom is is fine. And then whatever the top is is fine. Same thing with like the notched top edges. Same concept. Yeah, we're just gonna do it off the door again. Screw it. Oof. Still feels gray. No, we'll have a GoPro. It's just batteries charging. And what the things that you're gonna see on the outside of these doors are gonna be a little bit more helpful on this side. Um, and then we'll turn on the GoPro, I think, for the other side. Seeing how these doors are tucked on the outside is gonna be more important than whatever I can show you on the inside with the GoPro. <laughs> just did one of these the other day and had to pull the pull the panels because these are frustrating yeah these things these are not fun that's why i wanted to go live with this one can you snap shrink on plotter cut patterns yeah absolutely the only difference with plotter cut patterns is sometimes you'll have a little bit of the liner and stuff. But no, it's, you just gotta look at it like, okay, my patterns are all cut. If everything's pretty exact, like, I like to cut the bottoms pretty close anyways on those. But yeah, you can snap shrink them, 100%. Only thing a plotter's doing for you is getting you your patterns ahead of time. All right, so like most, most things uh, with these doors pull down you know a little bit farther than half on this just give yourself some extra film to work with as much as you can the older chargers are worse than this this is like a less exaggerated version of the chargers the like the older chargers without the rear quarter windows if you guys remember those so the same thing you can see this one's coasting into the seal a little bit easier. These are not as tight on the back. Generally speaking, they're not. Sometimes they can be. I think this is like the newest version of the Avengers before they discontinued it. So 
So that's why, like, I always try and stick with a similar insulation pattern because even if the seals are tighter, you don't have to really change your habits very much at all. The only thing that can really happen is what we saw on the front doors where it starts to like stick. So we're good. Make sure it's tacked up. We did add a lot of extra soap, like I said in the beginning. Um, just in case it started to stick, which it did. Um, but having too much is never going to be a problem in a situation like this. Having not enough is going to cause plenty of sticking. And when we get into the seals, we just, we don't want it to stick. Give it a good bath. This one, feel for glue. I'll generally do that on ones that I'm not confident all the glue is gone. There might be a little piece there that sticks behind. Hopefully this one will tuck in. All right. Beautiful. So as long as this one turned out clean, we're good on this one. Minus, of course, the little touch-up that we got to do on the outside with the uh, pinch points. Because you're not doing these like that, most likely, without a little bit of a pinch. So we got this. That's a... <laughs> definitely shows you some sort of a pinch there. Good God, what is this? So we can do a couple things. We can either let it sit. And let it dry out for a minute before we warm it up and press out the sides. Or we can just warm it up and touch them up. And be careful on plastics like this. These ones will bubble up relatively quickly so keep the heat moving take something block it if you need to just keep the heat moving feel on the inside let it heat up i may or may have not known that from experience what is that one I'm trying to pick up my... Wow, that's weird. Oh, there we go. Hello, Tin Studio. Uh, no, I can't drop it off. You gotta come pick it up. Sorry about that. All right, man, um, I'm almost done with the passenger side. With all the cleaning that has to be done, it's gonna take a little longer for the driver's side, but it should be wrapped up in about 45 minutes to an hour. All right, man. Bye. All right, 
right, so right here, whatever this is, little finger, little, it doesn't look like it was a crease, it's kind of an over-exaggerated finger that got left. Warm it up, take care of it all at once. Can you guys even see that? I don't even think you guys can see that. Right there? Yeah, something like that. All right, so that's one side. This side's all done, cool. Minus, just clean up. <sighs> all right, so let's get a GoPro up and running. That was fun. You guys have fun on one side? Where's my coffee? We need that too. All right, GoPro. Bird shit. No, was not. Was was like a, a resin or something? I don't know. It was like paint or some resin or some shit like that. It's kind of goofy. Hmm. So we got to play the, play the GoPro lottery here. Three batteries for charging and three batteries are not done charging. So we're going to check it. Oh, buddy. Tent Depot. Oh, thanks, man. Tent Depot with a $20 super chat, bro. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Thank you for supporting the stream. They, uh, can I even? I guess I can, real quick. I have to, they sent me this one. Satellite. Oh. All right, how do we, see this one? Nope. Nope, this is a bad idea. There we go. Oh, look at that. They sent me this one, which is super cool. All right. Okay, so let's set up the GoPro. Question, my... My dad's BMW 3 Series, do you think I should do a reverse roll or just a regular way? For your first time, honestly, a uh, reverse roll, it's still going to be tough. Um, but you'll learn more off of consistently doing reverse rolls than just carrying them in. Set up live. All right, let's see if we can get this up and running. This battery is at 92%, so that's good. We got enough to do this. What is that sound? Oh, that's... Hello, Tin Studio. Good, how are you? Okay. Um, what are you looking for? Just the sides and the back? Okay, um, it's start. Yeah, so I have a couple of different film options, but starting would be 240. I carry a, yeah. Starting, starting price to get in is 240. I can discuss different film options when you get here, but yeah. Um, I open, uh, earliest appointment is nine o'clock, uh, but I'm all booked up for tomorrow. I take appointments, so earliest availability is actually on Saturday right now. 
Um, I could get it in by 1 o'clock. Okay, sounds good. Uh, alrighty, thank you. We might have another appointment on Saturday. We do have a confirmed Focus RS for Saturday, though. So that's good. All right, we've got a GoPro. All right, we've got a GoPro. Let's switch it over. Ba boom! There we go. Love when this thing just works. But thank you, Tint Depot, for that. Like, we had a couple really good, uh, really big super chats for something like this. That's cool to see. Even on, uh, even on an old Avenger. Oh, and I totally forgot to mention, we built this heat box earlier today, so there'll be a video coming out on a pretty cool heat box. I think that's that ring sound. So I have I have Google Voice. But what I think is also happening is Google Voice is like maybe it's coming in through my like a web browser email thing. Which would make sense. But if that's the case, then I could I? Oh no I can't. I was gonna say if I could just switch my headphones over to the computer but I already have it tied up for text-to-speech, so that would make it not work so well. Oh boy, you guys know what time it is. Let's go get some plastic. Nice floor, thank you. Yeah, this was, uh, this was my weekend project. Finally got one of these, this is a race deck floor. Can I do a live stream on the Focus RS? Yeah, 100%. That one is deposited and all ready to go. Pretty sure we're just doing the um, sides and back on that one. So on the Focus RS, you got the spoiler that gets in the way. So we'll talk about that. I mean, we'll talk about the whole car, but we'll probably focus a little bit more on Tinning that back window. This is the most questions I get on a car like that. You guys remember those old Pioneer radios there? I used to work at auto accessory shops would see those regularly installed. And then the Android radio started coming out like with 7,000 features for like 200 bucks, but that none of the features would work properly. And then you have like the crazy flip out screens and shit. Damn. $5 super chat. Thanks for the help with the charger. Took five tries, but I finally got it. Hell yeah. You're welcome and good job. So those cars, those cars are not like, I don't know. If you ask about them in the groups, there's guys that have been doing them long enough that'll say it's no big deal. There's, they're easy cars to do. They get that way after you've done them a bunch of times. Like, shrinking the back window on something like that, especially in the beginning, is super frustrating. They're very curved, but they're very common cars, so it's one of those cars that you really have to know. And trust me, the more you practice on them, the easier that they get. So I've messed up my fair share of them. Those flip-up screens always break. <laughs> People are talking about the radios now. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm very familiar with, 
with the auto accessories market and like worked at a place called Cartoons around here. Like that's where I did a lot of tinning and then uh, my dad's shop was like 100% old. After, like it installed all these types of systems, like satellite TVs, flip out screens, all that kind of shit that, that people used to, people used to go crazy for that kind of stuff. Not so much anymore. What kind of mic do I use? Um, so I, 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 what I would recommend is pick up a Rode Wireless Go. It's a little block mic. Uh, it's got a block transmitter and a block receiver. It's really, really small. They're like each this big. And you can hook up a, a lav um, to the transmitter on it if you want to, or you can just use the block itself. So the mic that I'm using right now is a, a Sennheiser MKE-2, something like that. It's a stupid expensive wireless microphone, but they didn't have that little Rode wireless one um, until like a year after I already bought that Sennheiser. So for wireless microphones, you either went really expensive or you went wired. Like there was no really good in-between options. Because if you go in a car or something like that, you start getting static and then as soon as you start getting static on your audio, it's unusable and you never know when it was gonna happen. So you need something really reliable. That little Rode Wireless Go, super popular mic. Everybody's using it. It's 200 bucks. It's fantastic. So would highly recommend that little Rode Wireless Go. But Jamie, Jamie, thank you for that, uh, for that $5 super chat. I really appreciate that. How much is the spray tank that you use? Um, they've fluctuated in price. At the time, it was like 2 220 250 something along those lines. Now they're upwards of like 275 But when I bought mine, this was before people were putting like longer hoses and like brass fittings and shit like that. It was just like the shorter curly hose. And like it was fixed. There, was, there weren't these like ball lock connectors. So what's cool is I can just pop this off, quick disconnects, pop it back on and go about my day. So that makes it much easier. Um, they're hundred percent worth the investment though. So even at like three, 350, um, like if they, if, if basically if you were spending that high on them, it's hundred percent worth it. There's, you use them on every car. So I think most retail for around like 250, 275, um, they're, they're, I don't know. I can't say enough good things about them. Ever since I started using one of them, like I never stopped. I was using a poly sprayer. You gotta pump those up, fill them up for like every car. They constantly lose pressure. They start to break after a few months of, of abuse and never been a big fan of the trigger sprayers either. Some people do. And if you do, that's cool. Like everybody's got their own preferences. I, I love the spray tanks. You can see I use a lot of water. <laughs> All right, so back to the door. Nothing crazy here. Cut, cut, shift a little bit. Not very much. Probably a little more than what we should have. So we'll see if that bites us in the ass or not. This side's a little cleaner than the other side, so I'm not as worried, but that might mean it's when we get lax. And run into issues. Ooh, we gotta take a little bit off. Let's do that again. Probably been using this blade for a little bit more cleaning than what we should have before we started cutting these patterns out. I'm really glad that we got this far. <laughs> I was 
I was about to not go live with this one just because of the work that was involved. And it's like, uh, it's one of those where it's like, it's not the most exciting of live streams. Okay, so let's do that. We need a sip. We need a heat gun. We need a sip of some coffee. Did your blades come in? I gave a super chat for getting your blades. <laughs> yes, they did. I showed these earlier. We picked up two packs of them. There you go. Thank you. We do have the carbon steel blades. Scrape, 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 scrape. Bought some glass aid last night. Can't wait to try it out. Nice. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Uh, all the orders, um, those went out first thing, you know, about 11 o'clock this morning. Really appreciate that. I try and get them out as soon as I can. So all the ones that came in yesterday, we had a couple things going on. Got some orders out. But we got them done. Thanks for showing the real world, world tinting and mistakes. You're welcome. That's why, that's why we actually went live with this one. This I was on the fence, but thought about it and it's like uh, I know I know there's probably a bunch of guys that have had this and a bunch of newer people that are going to run into this and like you know ask about tight felt seals quite often so of course it makes sense my only concern <laughs> is like trying to get this done within a reasonable amount of time and the stream kind of like uh, can slow that down a little bit more than I like sometimes. So I was just like, ah, I should just like get it done. It's late, later in the afternoon. But then somehow, next thing I know, I'm <laughs> firing up a live stream. I'm like, ah, fuck it, let's do it. We got tight felt seals. Hopefully we don't make that many mistakes on this one, but if we do, it's part of the game. All right, so you saw it just from the outside angle. So we'll go on the inside, but we do this so often, it's not gonna look much different than a lot of my other jobs. But same concept, keep that long edge flat against the glass, roll up the tint, and then put some outside, like put some pressure to get it past that seal. But the tricky part is it's a pressure sensitive adhesive. So when you put pressure against it, you're like trying to let it flow and put pressure so it can sneak past that seal at the same time. Because if you just try and butt it up against the seal, um, it's, it's usually gonna stop and then it's gonna get a ripple. And then once it gets a ripple, it, it's not gonna like slide into the seal at all. So that one actually went pretty good. So that one went, went way better than the other side. So you guys got to see some hangups on the driver's side, got to see some 
easiness on the passenger side. That's just how these go sometimes. Sometimes you just like what you, the little bits that you learn from one side, you take it over to the other side. And then, you know, sometimes it can go a little bit easier. No good explanation for why that one went a little bit easier other than maybe the window got a little cooler. Maybe we <laughs> went a little quicker. Maybe we learned a little more. Who knows? It just did. Maybe it wasn't as tight. It still seemed about as tight, but teeny tiny differences. Plus we could still fuck it up at this point, so who knows. Ooh, it's tight. Oh, there it is. See it pinched. Right there. So pulling it back to loosen it up and then try going again. This side's not happy. Pull the seal back, get a lot of this air out. Okay, a little nervous here. The top went easier, rolled it up, and now the bottom wants to be a pain in the ass. So this, this is a little scary, but I think we'll be okay. I, there's nothing, no obvious spots that are grabbing, just like the whole thing's a little tight. There we go. I think we're, I think we're past most of it. It just found one little spot to like really bind up. But we got to get this air out because it, it balloons on you and then it'll constantly, as you're, as, you know, if you fight with it, it'll keep pushing back and like pulling back out. So we put a little bit down. There we go. Yay. I hope that was beneficial. You're amazing at tent. I eh. thank you. I I appreciate it. I don't I don't want to have like a big head about it. I mean, a lot of what I do, you'll see the the biggest commonality is like a lot of what I do is like newer uh, cars. Like if we get into the stuff of like the early '90s and before old school shit, no, fuck a lot of that. <laughs> Just being real. But what's a, what's a toko tokuchimo? Is that what that is? I don't know what that is. Sounds interesting though. Good deal. I think we're I think we're a hundred on this one. But this like this kind of stuff like was common for me to have to deal with for like a long time. Avengers, Chargers, 300s, all of those. It's like Chrysler City around here. I mean, to be fair, we have the big three, so we do have like Chrysler Factory and Ford. So we got a little guy we gotta push out right there. Almost looked like it was a hair, but it's not. It's just like a one little push, like pushed crease almost. Just real small. Ooh, it's clean. That's good news. You know, and I've gotten it too, where a lot of felt, like you'll see me soak this bottom part and I'll spray up into it to try and wash whatever I can away. Because sometimes if you don't, you'll get these lines 
where the felt, like little bits of the felt break away and feed into the tent. Every once in a while that happens to me still. It's, it's not common though. Usually it's on extra dirty vehicles. And it's the type of vehicles that have really fine, like, you know, somebody lives down a dirt road is where I would say that happens more often than not. Oh, it's a mineral water? Oh, interesting. It almost sounded like a bubble tea. All right. <laughs> See? The paneling on both sides, like... We got, we got a couple of things with this car that we want to make sure. The switch does work on the side though, so that's good. That would be the worst, walking back and forth on the other side. So we're down to our last window, which we got to go through the whole thing. So this is why I don't usually like to cut everything individually, shrink everything individually. Well, I mean, I guess I usually shrink everything individually. But by and large, when you cut your patterns together, it'll save you time. But for the sake of this live stream, doing them all individually for you guys on this one made more sense just to put a little bit more time into that driver's side. And once we had like the window cleaned, then we could really um, go right into the installation. So better to like, you know, cause some people will strip all the tint, cut all the patterns and then install them. Um, and I, I do that from time to time too, but when you let your window sit, it'll dry. And if it dries, like then you're basically cleaning off all the little glue bits that stuck back to it rather than just get it off while it was there. Cause there's like, there's usually something small even when you clean them. Should use tape. I might be able to use tape on this one. I don't really have, if I'm cleaning off glue though, I'd, I'd end up damaging the tape. So at that point, I'd have to put new tape and then trying to put new tape on a wet seal. But this one, I don't know. This one looks pretty clean. So maybe we can. But you don't really have to. It's all about technique. <laughs> if there's anyone that I would do, it would be the back passenger door. It's the loosest. It seems to be the cleanest out of all of them. So hang on, we're thinking. Cut, shrink. So I went to go get a trash can yesterday and Costco doesn't have the ones I want anymore. They swapped them out. They have like hundred dollar trash can combos now. It was sad. There's this one like we got for the kitchen here. So I have one but I wanted to get a couple of them for here in the studio. So I'm still shopping around a little bit. Metal trash cans are always like over, like 50 and over. But I wanted something that looked really clean. It'd be cool if we could have a motorized one, just because. 
just because it's unnecessary. But fun, right? Yeah, we're doing 5% on this. All right, so this is the tape. So we will be nice. We will tape one of these, I think. Um, it doesn't look, I don't know, this one's different. It almost looks like this one was never tinted because it's not showing any of like the glue. And I have a hard time believing that they somehow clean this one way better. So I don't know. So what we're gonna do is roll this down. We're gonna put some tape on it real quick. And whatever happens is whatever happens. So this is uh, called tuck tape. This is sh sheathing tape. I forgot what industry it's for, but that's the, that's the, what the tape is called. So we're just gonna like jam this in here, roll the windows down, get it in as far as you can. I mean, I guess we could go a little farther than that, huh? But it, it's really sticky. See, it's already sticking a lot. So I like this one. There was like a white one people were talking about too, but this was the first one that I was recommended and I picked up. But just like that, now we have a plastic um, border or like seal basically. And that's gonna help a lot with uh, with potential felt for sure. And what I like about this one in particular is it's extremely thin and extremely sticky. So it's, if you're gonna get any of them, get something kind of like this. But roll your windows down, uh, shove this tent tape in there as far back as you can. Some, some are stickier than others though. And as you spray, some will start to deteriorate. Some stick better to certain panels and stuff like that. Like same thing with the, with the panel covers, right? But this stuff, I was really, really impressed. So it's like, it's like the perfect width. So it wraps all the way around to like the backside. And this stuff definitely stays out of your way the most out of any that I've used. Painter's tape is, is thicker than this. And I never liked painter's tape because you start spraying it and it starts soaking through because it's just like a wax cover, right? It's not that special. And painter's tape is expensive too, compared to like a lot of other ones. This stuff's longer. I think it was like 12 or 13 bucks for like a roll. But I don't know. I'd be interested in just trying packing tape and shit like that too. I don't see why it would be much different as long as the packing tape is extra sticky. No, 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 oh God. Oh, recovery. I thought that was done for sure. All right. So last window. We've had a fun run. I swear this one doesn't seem tinted. Like, yeah, this, this one wasn't tinted, so that's good. So we don't have to be extra thorough on this one, just like the other one. Oh, <laughs> somebody talked about some of my old videos. Yeah, I remember those. Um, when I had no idea what a good setup looked like. <laughs> Just like, it was really annoying because I didn't have like anywhere good to film other than like at my dad's shop, but everything always looked annoying in the background. And then like when you're filming on a couch, you don't realize like, 
Hey, that actually looks really dumb. <laughs> You're just sitting, there's just a white wall. You have to put like a lot of depth behind some of the shots and whatnot if you want them to look better. But yeah, that was a long time ago. But you know what's crazy about shooting and posting videos back in 2011 is that is a long time ago now. At the time, YouTube was already pretty big. So people thought in 2011, getting into YouTube was very late in the game. And now they're like, oh, 2020, that's super late in the game. But any YouTube is more fair now to everybody. It's all recommended. It's all whatever people feel like clicking on. Anybody can succeed on it, so. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why I want to tangent about YouTube, but. Yeah, good times. <laughs> Will this live stream be up later? Uh, yeah, for sure. I don't take any of these ones down, so. Yeah, this one's definitely important. We, uh, I tried to do my best to shoot the outside. So we used a static angle on the, on the outside of the driver's side. And then we're using GoPro on the passenger. One million views is still considered a lot, but only like, but yeah, comparatively, it's like all the big channels like sneeze at a million, right? They want to hit that every video. Also like viral videos are not what they used to be. Like there used to be videos that everybody saw. Now it's less common. Subscriber counts are something that's really interesting too. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember. The thumbnails, and the thumbnails in those videos were, uh, were basically just, I could only, I couldn't do my own thumbnails. I had to pick a screen grab from the three that YouTube let me pick. That was funny. It's a fair amount's changed from there, but the, all the concepts are still solid. So you can still tint windows the exact same way from those videos, which is really cool. So this is for me where the tape would really be beneficial. Because you have like this, this point of possible shit to feed in here, but we closed it all up with a nice clean, fresh, plastic seal. So now it's about TikTok. True to some respect, but it there's so the audio is super delayed. Oh no, I didn't realize it was that delayed. I'll have to check it. I know I set a delay on it, but I didn't realize it was that far off. There's always a delay on this GoPro in particular. Or like when I'm streaming a GoPro this way. So it's like, it's different every time. Um, tint, we usually use GeoShield here in the studio. The, so, the funny thing about TikTok, though, is like it's it's allowed for a lot of new people to to get gain like huge viewership very quickly, but they're all very short impression videos, so they're only like you know 15 seconds to a minute, um, which and, and it's a younger audience, so it's it having having like a hundred thousand to a million followers on TikTok is not quite the same as as that number on YouTube. Um, just the viewer base is, is very different, but it it's really interesting to imagine where, where something like that might go, because it's, it's basically like Vine 2.0. All right, we're done. We have a couple pinches. So 
So we will heat those out and we will be good. I could talk about platforms for a long time. The difference between Twitch and YouTube, Facebook. It's amazing how Facebook's managed to actually pick up in relevancy too. go so same thing with here oh we got one here too so you see this it's a little it's definitely difficult for you guys to see um, but I'll always get asked about pinches when I two-stage windows the tighter the seals the more apparent a pinch would be but the thing is it's like they're always in the seals and you just take a little bit of time Warm it up, put your finger on the inside, feel that heat coming through, get it to the point where it hurts. And if you let it sit there too, it'll actually just dry out. And when it dries out a little bit, that's when you push it. And if you're patient with it, you can get it out in one go. So if I look carefully, I can still vaguely see a line, but it's very difficult to find. It's just when the light happens to bounce on it, right? And that's on a door that's really, really tight. And these are older. So like comparing this to something that's newer, um, you're not gonna have as hard to find of a line there at all. And they're just gonna be like little guys to press out. So if you have them at all, so. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Where's my, I can't even, we're doing limo on this, so I can't even see where my triage is. But yeah, same thing. Heat it up, press it out. So, I'm really, really confident in this type of, uh, How do I say this? Like, if you have a little pinch point there and you press it out, I'm really confident. Um, uh, that a customer is <laughs> like, put it this way. I have, there's very, very few things that I've never had happen, right? I've broken windows. I'll admit that I've, um, fucked up plenty of windows. Like, I mean, I've broken glass before tinting cars. But the one thing that I've never had is anybody ever, like, little pinch point or something that was touched up properly, it's not an issue. Never, never been an issue on anything I've ever done. So, if anybody's concerned about trying to see a little pinch point or something like that, don't worry about it. They're touched up right, they're impossible to find, especially on anything modern. The extra tight seals, yeah, you're probably gonna see them a little bit. But only when you're looking for them. So if you don't do anything and it all dries out, then you're gonna have an issue. But you have, like as long as you touch them up is what I'm trying to say. You're not going to have any type of, uh, any repercussions for doing something like that. So I think we're done. That's good. Hey, and she still starts. Perfect. Whenever you gotta leave an older car on for an extended period of time, have a battery charger handy, because chances are they didn't replace the battery anytime soon. And it's gonna be on for a lot longer. Neat, this looks really good.
I'm happy with this. Except for that. Except for this little guy right here. Oh, I think there's something on the driver's door, so I gotta touch it. If, I don't, if I'm not mistaken. I like the rewind, rewind to raw. It works great, thank you. Awesome, glad to hear it. I love the whole concept of it. It seemed, and I'll be honest, it, I shrugged it off in the beginning. I thought it was unnecessary. And then I started to actually use it and I started to pay attention a little bit more. Yeah, I haven't touched this door up yet. And what that's taught me is to kind of try and give more things longer than a eh. Oh, somebody asked me about an apron now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Thanks for reminding me. Somebody asked me earlier about that. So we're going to do here. Oh, yeah. We got to do the tape on the back passenger. I got to remove that. Thank you. That too, right? Okay, so tool belt. What are we using? Let's not catch this on the mic cord. This is the Avery Denison pouch. Um... We recently started, like a couple of weeks ago, started using two squeegees rather than just the one. But so you got a nice size pouch up front and then you got a bigger pouch right behind it. And then you have this little spot to tuck in like your little essentials and you got two loops for whatever you need. And generally speaking, you don't need more than that. You don't need like a whole thing to take up like, you know, with 15 pockets and then it's fucking jamming into your stomach. So do this kind of like holster it on the side a little bit. It's, it's been great. Um, there's also a little thing to note, a metal um, like plate right here because there's some, like for vinyl wrapping, there's those metal, or there's those magnet squeegees that you can just stick to it. So kind of a little bonus there, but I don't know. Really like one of these things, super handy. Um, hey, I'm from Germany. What's the name of the film that you stick on the door panel? Never see somebody use it in Germany. Um, that's just carpet protectant. So you can find it in, uh, like a hardware store. Um, I'm playing around, like, I, I want to find a couple different ones, but basically like, you know, when you see brand new vehicles, they have plastic covering panels and stuff like that. It, uh, like I'd look in the, um, automotive, uh, body shop stores, stuff like that, if you can, like online or uh, this stuff in particular. Um, the only stuff I could find locally was at Lowe's or Home Depot here. Um, it's just carpet protectant, so it's made to stick to a pretty rough, you know, fuzzy surface and then peel off clean. Um, and it's thin, it's cheap. So that, it works pretty well, but it doesn't stick to all types of door panels still but I don't think I found anything that has yet. So I don't know, playing around with some different stuff. Do some people get the front windshield tinted? Yeah, for sure. We've actually done quite a few of them on stream. They're a lot of fun um, once you get the hang of them. 2016 Acura TLX. Um, should be pretty straightforward. Acuras are generally easy. So is this your new studio at home? It looks amazing. Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah, this is this is the Detroit Tint Studio. Yeah. So we got film boxes on the wall. We got some banners. I mean, we got um, this taking up most of the space. But what I'm super happy about that we just did, um, I don't know how much of it you saw, but the look at that floor. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. I love this floor. So that was the weekend project. Um, yeah, uh, let me 
Here, let me switch back to the GoPro really quick. I'll take that tape off. I totally forgot. Off. I totally forgot. All right. And we don't want to forget this stuff either. So, if it's really far tucked there, you're going to have a hard time just pulling it out. I mean, sometimes you can. Well, I mean, you usually should be able to is what, what I'm trying to say, actually. But if you can't, then you should have no problem rolling down the window and then pull it out. Ta-da! <laughs> this is fix the seal for him a little bit. As you can see, there's some, uh... <laughs> you guys know about this car already. Um, so we should be good. Should be able to shut this off for right now. And it clicked at me. So cool, you can have your studio at home, it looks amazing. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh it's it's really really cool to do something like this at home. But it's not without some type of concern, right? So I don't know. We'll run for this as long as we possibly can. I think one of the most interesting things is always like being some sort of online creator and then running this from home. And then it is kind of funny too, because the customers that call me, I'd say about half of them don't realize that it's actually at a house. And then when they show up, like when they roll up, they're like, oh, I wasn't looking for a house. And it's like, yeah, I didn't really want to announce it, but it, I certainly don't hide it. So, but like, what I really like with, with something like this floor, with keeping a clean space, like this looks better than a lot of uh, tint shops that I've been in already, just like this. So when, I, when a customer's here and the garage is open, they look right in, they know that I'm at least serious about getting something done here, right? And the types of pictures that I use, the types of reviews that I'm getting, like, it's all to put people at ease. Because what I'd imagine, like, if I was shopping around for some window tint, I would probably skip over somebody's house, if I'm being honest. But if I saw lots of content, got a feel for the space, got a feel for the guy that's doing it, um, I then that might change my mind some more. But it's still, I think it's a, it's a pretty big step for anybody just to come get their windows tinted here as it is, especially when we're talking about same pricing as full-blown retail around here. So, alrighty, so that's that. What tips would you give for tinting outside? Uh, find a way to tint inside. And I don't say that just to be weird. Um, it's you're gonna have a tough time outside. I've never, um, I, I've always demanded that I've tinted inside. So if I've if I've gone to a uh, like a dealership or something like that, and they're like, "Here's the keys," and it's like, "Okay, where do you want me to tint it?" And they're like, "Can't you tint it outside?" No, no, I need a spot, or it's not getting done. And don't be afraid to walk away from a situation like that. Like, people are proving even if you're mobile. Um, I guess it depends on the job too, because I've heard all sorts of stuff, but like I've been talking to a couple guys that are like 100% mobile and they're still like, they're making it work. They're going, like people, they're pricing themselves in a certain area where, where the majority of people have a space for you to tenant and you ask for a space basically. So yeah, I, tinting outside, that's a, it's a tough gig altogether. Uh, do you still use Lexan film? I never really, I only played around with it a little bit. I've never installed it seriously. Um, I, but I have been paying attention to the groups. And it's definitely, 
it looks good out of the box, but uh, when you get it in some strong sunlight, it's got a haze to it, and it also is a more difficult film to work with in general, from what I've been hearing um, and seeing. Like, there's, there's this point, it'll shrink easily, and then you get to the, like, you get past this easy part, and then it gets really difficult to shrink. So, um, there's just a few things there. Like, you kind of get what you pay for in that regards, though. It's definitely a recommended uh, economy film, though. So you still tint at your dad's shop? Nope, not anymore. Um, we did off and on for a little bit of a time. Came back there for like one day a week, and then uh, winter hit, and and he didn't want me there anymore because uh, they didn't have as much work, so. What do you do if the seal is deep down? Do you tuck it, or do you, oh. So yeah, like a lot, on a lot of Ford vehicles, right? Um, the seals on the inside will be like down this much farther than the outside. Generally speaking, no, you don't have to. I pull them down far, but I'm never really concerned with going all the way into the seal on, on instances like that. I just want it out of the line of sight. So I don't want to see any glass that's not tinted, right? Um, but pull it farther down. And you have to keep in mind, generally these are cars that don't have tighter inside seals either. So like Ford seals are pretty loose. You, you'll, you'll generally be okay. Um, German cars, they, the seals seem to be pretty matched up. So, um, yeah, I, I, I don't pull them down too far. What is the percentage that you take and pay yourself for your business? Right now, I'm just all. <laughs> Whatever the bills are, we get those taken care of, and then it's just... There's, I'm not really floating um, any type of money in a business bank account specifically for the business other than the things that I'm looking to get done right now. I just, right now, there's, there's a lot of avenues. So there's like YouTube, there's like the store, there's here, there's tinning at a glass shop, shit like that. So probably should put myself on more of a budget. Is removing tint hard? Yeah, we just saw it a little bit ago with like the little bit of glue, well, with the glue and like the remainder tint. It, it's, it can be really annoying. Um, okay, let me message this guy really quick. Voice. Cool. So he's messaged. Um, how do you feel about pre-cut tint? Pre-cuts are fine. Um, being dependent on pre-cuts is the difficult part. So if you're just looking to do it on like, if you got a couple doors or you only tint your home cars or whatever, you know, tinning's one of those tricky things to learn. Um, but there's nothing wrong with using pre-cuts. Like plotter systems, a lot of shops run with them that's what they use on a daily basis. The, where it can be, um, where it can be a real problem though, is like getting closer to like the top edges, and that's 100% dependent on the patterns. But as a concept, I don't mind pre-cut patterns at all. Um, but as a tinter here, and a lot of the softwares that I've that I've dealt with, um, most of them, a lot of them, they're real funny about the top edges, and and different patterns have different different issues because they just weren't like quality control is pretty loose. Alpha Romero 159. I just did an alpha. Oh, but I didn't do the one fight. We don't have that one here. Ooh, that is a pretty car though. Send it my way. I'd be happy to do it. Um, I'm looking at some pictures. Yeah, I don't know. That's cool. That I like that one. That looks good. <laughs> I have a problem tucking under the seal, so I started removing it. Yeah, that's okay. Like, there's there's 
definitely two two groups of people. Some that remove a lot of things and some that don't. Uh, I, I don't like taking a lot of stuff apart, but you definitely have a, a group of people out there that all do that. They'll remove panels, they'll remove seals. Um, I like to try and keep everything as OEM as I possibly can. Um, but actual installation, doing it that way is going to be much easier um, for installing the tent. You just have all the, the puzzle of the door panel itself. So. So no plotter, you hand cut. Are you going to get a machine that cuts it for you? Uh, I technically have one. I still got to go pick it up. Um, <laughs> it's sitting at another shop. It's a story for another day. But I, I don't know. Unless, what am I trying to say? Generally speaking, no. It's most softwares that, I would, that would be available to me um, aren't aren't worth it for me. So top edges would kind of suck. Um, the issue too is like, you know, you load up the plotter, you cut out the patterns, then you, then you weed them, you cut them, you shrink them, you get them on the door. And after you've done all that, it really hasn't saved you that much time. Plotters are for higher, like they really shine in higher production uh, tint shops. So you have somebody running the plotter, cutting patterns for you. If you, the installer, is running the plotter as well, you're not saving yourself a lot of time because you're telling you got to be the one to do all the machine stuff. And then you come back over um, and do all the installation. But the plotter is its own basically employee, I would look at it. Like it's an employee that you would pay 150 bucks a month um, to cut patterns for you. But if you're the one that's, that has to rearrange and do all the cutting and all that, like it just takes more time or it takes extra time. Um, so you can generally hand cut something in a similar time frame um, as a plotter, but they take up space um, and it, you need somebody else to really run it for you to, to really get the most bang for your buck out of it, I think. So nice setup. Thank you. All right. So with that, um, we're going to go ahead and end things. Thanks you guys so much for watching. Saturday, Saturday for sure, is going to be our next live stream, 9 a.m. with a Focus RS. So that'll be pretty fun. Very standard Focus. Like, it's the nicest of all the Focuses, but the doors, all those are the same. Um, we have a spoiler on the back. That's going to be probably the main focus uh, of the live stream. So um, I'll be sure to put a little bit more detail into that. But should be 9, 9.30. Um, AM on Saturday will be the next live stream. So thanks everybody for hanging out in this one. Um, huge thank you to uh, everybody that left a super chat. There was quite a few of them today too. Steven, uh, Kirill, and Tint Depot. Um, unless I missed anybody. I don't think I missed anybody off of that. I just got a, oh, YouTube window, why are you so bad? Oh, and Jamie, cool, awesome. Tint Depot, thank you for hanging out this time. I don't know if you're generally here, but it's good to have you. They're, they're big supporters of the channel, so I just wanted to give an extra shout out to them too. And uh, everybody else that hung out with me today, the streams would not be what they are without you guys hanging out, contributing, asking questions. Like, this is a lot of fun for me to do. So, obviously, we set it up this way. So, thanks again, and I will see you in the next one. Oh, and for that last question there, What's the scrubber you use? Uh, it's a Triad Scrub It. So Tint Depot has those. Um, go here. Check out that. It should be on that list of stuff.